back to our main part of the afternoon. Gravel fans, former Pat Roach just getting to the ring there. The former British heavyweight champion who relinquished his title recently simply because his commitments wouldn't allow him to hold it. 18 stone 12 of bomber Pat Roach. And giving away nearly five stone to Pat Roach, the young boy from Birmingham, also Steve Logan, turned pro at 17 years old. That was in 64. So he's just about uh, 20, 21 now, and he's got a job on here this afternoon. Let's hear from Roy Harding, our MC, to announce this contest. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our second contest is a heavyweight contest to be held over eight three-minute rounds. Two falls, two submissions, one knockout will decide the winner. It's my privilege to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, in the red corner, star of Alf Wieders Aim Pet, Bomber Pat Roach. <laughs> and his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, please welcome Steve Logan. Thank you, Roy Harding and Steve Logan. There, the good-looking lad, from, also from Birmingham, 14 stone exactly in weight, and his opponent this afternoon, bomber Pat Roach, 18 stone 12. So very nearly five stone difference here, and has he got a job on? Dave Reese, the referee. Round one. Round one of eight three-minute rounds, two falls, two submissions, or a knockout to decide this winner. And Roach in the plain black trunks, the giant bearded wrestler. Famed for so many movies he's made recently, including uh, Never Say Never Again with Sean Connery, Bond picture. And of course, the television series of Fetus Egg Pat. But also pretty well known as a top heavyweight wrestler in this country too. A man who's been to Austria, Turkey, India, Spain, United States, uh, New Zealand, and German tournaments very often. He really has been all the way around. His former judo black belt first dan and former amateur boxer. So quite a sportsman all around. Bomber Patrick of Birmingham. Six foot five inches in height. Steve Logan. Yeah. Looking at him quite a bit shorter, trying that grapevine there with a side headlock, but not very successfully because of the double-handed wrist lever that Roach has not let go of once so far since he took hold. That's a nice one. And that stopped him just a little bit suddenly. Oh, yes, height. Roach height. <laughs> Roach looks down at him and says, how do you like that, then, son? <laughs> Next time you try and forearm smash me, think about what uh, might come back to you. Reverse side headlock. Roberts, nice whip, nice whip by him. He's <laughs> Roach again a little bit surprised with that one. Nice one, Logan there. That's whipping a, a giant of 18 stone 12. Ah, yes, typical Roach there. That arm beautifully. Less than a minute to go, by the way. Back hammer still on. Roach trying to turn his man back to canvas. And he's just about there. Now, can he hold? Only one. Just under 30 seconds to go in this uh, first round of eight. No, surely. <laughs> oh, he's very, very nearly. Yes, he's there. Roach let him up the end. <laughs> Grin on his face as he allows him to get the final distance. Well done. Took him with him on that finger interlock. Had to go. On the bell now, round one. <laughs> and the way Pat Roach threw him off there like a baby. All 14 stone of him. Well, there he is, this man who took the title, British heavyweight champion, off Ray Steele. 
of Wakefield in April of last year at Dorking. We saw that on television then, unfortunately forced to relinquish the title because of his many commitments in the Birmingham area. Seconds away, round two. Round two. But he's still very interested in the in meeting the would-be title holders. And I'd like to see him against the present title holder, the one who uh, got the vacant title, and that, of course, was Gil Singh, Dalbia Singh of uh, India. It'd be interesting to see the former champion versus the present champion. Maybe we'll see that on television one day soon. Meantime, round two, just a question, how much? Yeah. And that's a typical <laughs> suplex move by Roach, one of his favorite moves. He tried it in the last round and almost came off. This time he made it all the way. But can he hold this boy down? One. Steve Logan, born May 30th, 1964. Is coming up 23. Referee Dave Reese uh, not really had much to do yet, but I don't think he will with either of those two. We'll be dishing out too many warnings today, I don't think. Oh, yes, double up. Backbreaker. Logan has got to slide down. Somehow he's got to get down. He's off. Oh, but he walks straight into the forearm. And it really is starting to look a little bit much for Logan here. Tried the headbutt to the stomach. Takes him in a head mare. Oh, yes, nicely. <laughs> I never thought he'd get Roach out of the ring. That's something. Less than a minute to go now. And Pat Roach coolly climbs in. Just hold it a minute. But climb ready, son. Side headlock. Roach. Chancery now. Taking his man down knee height here. Thirty seconds to go, round two. And Logan wants more in trouble. Headlock and strangle. Well, he hasn't got too long. He's got about six seconds to go. Into a head scissors. But no worry for Logan. The bell will save. Successfully extricated there, that leg by uh, Dave Reese. <laughs> Logan decided not to bother with pulling that man up too early. So Dave Reese gives him a hand. <laughs> anyway, he gets his way. Round three coming up. Seconds away, round three. Six to go. No score. Logan's still holding out well, but. Uh, very near thing for him in that last round. <laughs> Got that headbutt to the stomach in finally. Oh yes, nicely. Takes his man right off the deck. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Logan must feel happier now. Up at eight. <laughs> just, that was still standing there. Maybe he's going to deliver one inside. That's it. That's it. <laughs> he's out taken three. That's enough. That posting crossways did surprise <laughs> Roach quite a bit. He's smiling now, but it shook him a bit at the time. Exactly the right angle on it. Same that suplex, arm suplex. Roach special. 
but he hasn't got the shoulder blades down or anything like it yet. Wrist lever. <laughs> Trying the cross press, uh, the cross press, oh, over the top, which is going to make very, have a very little effect, I should think. And this time, Roach waiting for him, takes him all the way over. And the arm lever held against the joint by the left knee. So Roach really having it all his own way at the moment. With a few minor exceptions here. He's dictating this contest. And why not? With this five, near five stone weight advantage and his extra experience as well. Roach has been a pro wrestler since the 70s. Since the 70s. And uh, his opponent, Steve Logan, turned pro May 1980. Turning out to be a very good lad, but I think this is a little bit much for him today. He seems to be happy with that head scissors, though. The look on his face, the glee as he got his man in a hole. There's the roach. Going quite happily into a bridge, restless bridge there, with just exactly five seconds to go. On the bell, and Roach doesn't have to bother about that. <laughs> Another complicated way of getting out of that head scissors. She was on his way too. The wry smile, he goes back to its corner. Steve Logan, from Birmingham, 14 stone. Judo man as well as his opponent. Martial arts club in Birmingham. The Hachi Shinkai is one of his uh, special martial, martial arts. Trains with the running and the weights mostly. Just back from Canada fairly recently. Second away, round four. Round four, five rounds to go, and still no score in this heavyweight contest. Not a catch weight on this occasion, although the difference in weights, because Steve Logan wanted to go up to heavyweight and take a man like this on, Pat Loach, on even terms. Well, he's got his chance, but he's having problems. <laughs> he looks very happy every time he wins a move or gets Pat Loach worried. Oh, back elbow, nicely. Yes, the switch. And he walks straight back of the foot. Roach a little bit mad that he was taking it just a little bit too much at the beginning of this fifth, fourth round. And I think he wants to give him his lesson. Clutch hole, slam, followed on quickly on the shoulders, and the full weight of Roach will hold him. Forty-eight seconds of round four. The first fall, Pat Roach, just by holding the shoulder blades down with his own weight on the hands there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in round four, 48 seconds of round four, first pinfall of the contest to Bomber Pat Roach. Well, naturally expected. But here we go again, see how this happened. The, the, rather throw rather than a slam but the way, the way Roach followed it up with the elbows right on the shoulder blades there holding the shoulder blades down quite amazing that was round five coming up second away round five four to go Roach leading one for the nil taking very little notice of this, just looking rather amazed. Dave Reese from Shrewsbury. Oh, yes. Referee from Shrewsbury here. And this looks like a possible... Oh, he's thrown off again so easily. <laughs> he just hadn't got the weight to hold this big man down, of course. Still a good try. Good try. Figure 
four leg lock. Roach in charge again. Left his head a bit near, but still the figure four leg lock wins. And it's a side surfboard coming up to Roach if he can get his man back. All the way on the flex and a backbreaker. All he wants is a submission from this, and he's got the bout in the round five. But no, he didn't submit. Applause from the crowd here at the Hereford Leisure Center. Congratulating him on not submitting from there. Bootlace, always going to be tucked in well, could be dangerous for the opponent's eyes. <laughs> so he Roach looks up in surprise when this the lad comes in with something that worries him a little. Backhammer, he's got a minute to make this count. Yes. I blame uh, Steve Logan for keeping his head out of the way then. Ideas of a back elbow from Roach. Trying to get the man down, back to canvas. He's got just about 15 seconds to do it in. And thrown off so easily. A 14 stone goes through the air from this big man here. Right on the bell, round five. Well, there he is, the man who was trained for pro wrestling originally by Alf Kent, the former Midland area champion. He runs, incidentally, the Pat Roach Health Club in Piccadilly, Birmingham, so he's pretty busy with that. Apart from uh, films he's busy with and television series, no wonder he hasn't got time to defend his title. Seconds away, round six. Round six, three rounds to go, and still Pat Roach leading Steve Logan. One fall to nil, gained in the fourth round, as we start round six. <laughs> Dave Reese, all he's done, so far he hasn't needed a warning of any kind yet, all he's done is count. Very few pinfall counts, mostly knockout counts. Missed it by a mile. Roach saw it coming and a bad landing by Logan. Oh, he landed really badly on his back. And Reese, the public and come referee, busy most of the time with the his pub at Osborne Street, known as the Crown, where he's a tenant, is now taking time out to referee. He does very seldom these days. And he's really a bit worried about the way that boy landed there. Well, here's how it happened. Trying to fling Ro Roach onto the ropes, hoping that he could follow up with that drop kick. But Roach saw it coming, held the top rope, and S Steve Logan well, here lands badly. Ladies and gentlemen, in 53 seconds of round six, the referee has stopped the contest. And Steve Logan is obviously unable to continue. So the contest is awarded to Bummer Pat Roach, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, you can all see that Logan's in rather a lot of trouble. Uh, and I suppose at about this stage, the opposing wrestler usually says he refuses to take the contest because of the bad injury. But I feel that I've had a hard match today. And I feel that I should, in fact, take the victory. And perhaps in losing, it may well endorse him learning a lesson rather than not losing the match. So, in fact, I will take the match. I won't give in. I'll take it. So, why shouldn't he? He won it fairly and squarely, just because the guy was uh, very much lighter than him. Anyway, 
That's it. A win for Roach. A technical knockout in round six after leading by one fall. It's time now to say goodbye from all of us here at Hereford. We hope you've enjoyed it. But next.